It's the Whitetail Crossing Convenience Store Race Report on Cool Gold 1460 with Dan the Boy Stiker and Billy Doc Niles brought to you by Whitetail Crossing Convenience Stores in Baraboo, Black River Falls, and Toma. By Big Boar Barbecue, Highway 16 West Salem, and 3rd Street, Downtown La Crosse. By Dean Satellite and Security, your local Direct TV retailer. By the Days Inn Hotel and Conference Center on French Island La Crosse. By Dells Raceway Park in Wisconsin Dells. By Weir's Machine and Racing Products in Bangor, Wisconsin. And by J. Teach Long Shots Grill and Saloon in historic downtown West Salem. Now here's Doc and Dan with today's report. All right, race fans, it's Saturday. Welcome in, and hopefully the weather's going to be good tonight because we've got a lot of activity at the Cross Fairground Speedway. I'm Radio Man Dan Dyke, along with Billy Knock Niles. This is the Whitetail Crossing Community Stores Race Report here on 1460 WBOG. Google 1460 on your laptop and the TuneIn app. Everybody knows I love the TuneIn app. Let's just cut to the chase here. How did Kakana go this Tuesday? The Dixieland 250 was simply outstanding. The rain that happened during the pre-race, well, that could have gone away, but it did kind of cool us off as we were getting drenched on the front straight away and then the rain delay which was almost an hour and cost about 36 laps during the actual 250 itself uh really drug on i mean that was a long day we got there just before noon and we weren't in bed till about two and after about seven brats uh, nine hamburgers and at least 15 cookies from the Danny Fredrickson family. I was tired. Oh, I can imagine. But so overall, your first Kakana Dixieland 250 experience? It was outstanding. Going through the pits, I mean, it was kind of a shock. I'd only been to Kakana once, and that was when Sterling Marlin took on Rusty Wallace in 2001. Uh, they had a pair of 15-lap races against each other, so I was in the grandstands. Now, in the pits, I'd never realized how small that pit area was for almost a half-mile track. Everywhere you looked were stars. And I'm not talking Kyle Bush. I'm not talking Mark Martin or Kyle Benjamin. The best of the best were there, and they showed it during that race. Tell me, uh, tell me a little bit more about the experience, like the Mark Martin experience, getting to meet him for the first time. Watching about 2,000 people in the line to get that man's autograph was outstanding. Got to meet him. He was wearing his Hall of Fame NASCAR shirt. Uh, did a great interview with us, which is coming up on today's program as well. Uh, I had a chance to talk with Kyle Bush, and it was kind of interesting. Uh, I'm going to quash the D-bag rumor of Kyle Bush. Everyone uh, was asking me. So he's still a D-bag. That was the nicest Kyle Bush I'd ever seen. I've met him three different times. We're going to talk about that in the program as well. Kyle Benjamin, Xfinity driver, was there also. Took second in Iowa last week. He's going to join us in the program. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to take you back trackside and instead of you asking me what I thought the experience was, we're going to put you right there. Here is Ty Majeski, third place at the time at Kakana. Just so happy to get a podium finish tonight? Yeah, uh, after how we ran all race, yeah, definitely happy with a third place. I, I shouldn't say happy. Obviously, we're, we're not happy. But uh, um, for what we had uh, to come away with third is, is pretty good. Um, we just obviously didn't have the car where we wanted it all night. Um, so it's uh, obviously frustrating. Obviously, this is one of the races we wanted, uh, one of the races we haven't won. Um, premier races in the Midwest. So uh, obviously wanted it. Uh, I felt like, you know, honestly, for how bad we were, we were, you know, right there um so to speak uh, obviously we needed more but uh to be as, as bad as we were to, and uh, and be, com, still be competitive is, is pretty cool i think a lot of guys would be happy with a top three of the dixieland obviously we're disappointed so um we'll figure out what happened um reevaluate uh what we did tonight and um hope we can find an issue so we got time majeski third place at the time here is kyle bush this was his pre-disqualification interview Congratulations on a lot of late night, right? <laughs> Congratulations, second Dixie Line. So, how about the last five laps there with a, the five car coming in on your closer? Did you kind of feel a little nervous there? I wasn't necessarily nervous, but uh, the car wasn't the best there at the end. We had definitely used it up a little bit there early in the race. When, I, when the five was on its way to second place, I was trying to stretch it out because I knew he had tires on us. So I wanted to get as big of a lead as I could to make him have to push his stuff and, uh, and try to chase us down, and then that caution came out, you know. So you always play with that. and and uh, hope that it doesn't happen, but when it does, you just got to pray that your car is good enough to hold them off in the end. Earlier, before the race, Mark Martin came up to you and said, no matter what, enjoy racing at this place. Yeah. And you won here twice. Ten years ago, the exact since the last time you won, 
Is this place enjoyable to race that you want to see like a truck series race here or something <laughs> like that? It'd be fun, you know. It's uh it's a great little short track. I enjoy it and uh you know, it's just unique. There's nothing else like it out there, you know, the the way the bumps are here, the way the wall jets out at you off a of turn four and the way the banking is in the center of the corners and not there on the edges of the corners, you know, so it's just a uh, a really unique racetrack. So I enjoy it, it's fun, it's challenging and uh you know, I think it takes a, a really good driver and a really good car to win here. Anybody else, Bill? Bill? It seemed like this all came together for a heck of a show, and, and the fans stayed through the rain, and mm -hmm. uh, they saw a heck of a race tonight. Yeah, I, I thought so. I thought the fans saw a great race. You know, I just appreciate them sticking around. It was kind of a long one, and uh, a lot of kids here still, too, you know, so really awesome to, to see the support of the local short track scene and everything that, uh, that the fans come out and put forth with uh, being here at Wisconsin International Raceway. So, of course, Kyle now goes last. Ty has second after about a 14th. He was running 14th to 8th almost the entire time. All right, you've given me first. You've given me third. Who was declared the winner? Casey Johnson. And listen to this interview as he was asked what it was like to get a surprise check for ten grand. Well, <laughs> still speechless. Um, no, I don't know. Uh, this is a heck of a day. Uh, definitely a surprise just to jump in a car that Hell, I've never really seen before. I've raced against it a couple of times, but uh, you know it's great equipment and a uh, heck of an opportunity to drive, and I'm glad we were able to come away with one. Your reaction when you found out what happened with Kyle Busch? <laughs> Definitely mixed emotions because uh, I finished second. That would have been the second time I finished second in this race, and it's, uh, you know, in the Midwest, this is one of the deep premier event, you know, and uh, to fall short you think about it an entire year until you get back and try it again you know so uh i saw him roll over scales three times i knew something was wrong so just wondered uh if anybody was going to come over and talk to me later <laughs> so you just just give me tell me what happened were you behind him or ahead of him in the scales there or uh we were just parked next to him we had to put our car on stands and uh you know tear some things apart and they just couldn't get him across the scales and me and ty had already been through what was it so who told you um <laughs> they actually hid the, the check behind um Scotty Null, and he comes over with the old serious face and pops check out. Says congratulations, so wow. it's pretty neat. So you finally got your first argument with Sewer One. You got it at a track that's been there, and especially in a big event like the Big. Yeah, event. this is definitely a, a little one to get your first one in. So hopefully they just keep falling now. Congratulations. Thank you. Diker, I'm disappointed in you. It is the ultra-fast Casey Johnson. I did bring that up in the pits because I talked to him. I was interviewing Kyle Busch. Mark Martin was interviewing Ty Majeski. Then Ty Majeski was interviewing Mark Martin because that was the first <laughs> time those two had ever met each other face-to-face. -face. Yep. They've tweeted and they've talked on the phone. Yep. So then Kyle and I are done doing an interview. Here comes Casey Johnson. And I'm talking to Casey. I'm like, now whose car are you in? It's Rich Schumann Rich Jr.'s car. car yep. And he wasn't even called until that morning to drive Rich Schumann's car. Rich was actually there, but he did, couldn't get off work, so he was in the grandstands near us uh, later in the night. What a run that was. And I said I had Casey in my top five before we got to Kakana. And I tell you what, if that last green-white checkered restart would have been double wide instead of single file, Casey had something for him. Yeah, that was the advantage of the, the, advantage of the leader right there, the single file restart. Johnson was coming on, you know, with them fresh tires. He was just marching his way through the field them last 50 laps. So great job by Casey. Got to have kudos to Ty. Uh, made his way to second place. Austin Nason, also a huge surprise, ran the top four for 250 laps. And all those experiences I just had from the Dixieland 250, coming up in the program today, Kyle Benjamin, Mark Martin, the Burner Rubber Race Reports come member as well, and Billy Knockdown is going to let you know what's on tap for the lacrosse speedway tonight. We've got some destruction coming up. We're going to talk about that next. Google 1460 WBOG. Are you looking for comfort under the sun? You can find that and a whole lot more with your stay at the Days Inn Hotel and Conference Center on French Island La Crosse. The Days Inn has 148 spacious rooms, an indoor pool, hot tub, fitness room, and plenty of banquet space to host that big meeting or wedding reception. If you're hungry, food and drink are just steps away at the Heroes Bar and Grill inside the hotel. So if you're planning a pool party, wedding reception, or just want a night away in a jacuzzi suite, Days Inn Hotel and Conference Center on French Island is your stop under the sun. You don't have to fly to Kansas City to get great barbecue. Jerry Beyer here, and I'm pleased to announce that we have opened a new location. Now you'll find our Big Boar Cook Shack parked on the corner of George and July Street every Wednesday through Sunday. 
So come on over and sink your teeth into the barbecue voted best in La Crosse County. Don't forget takeout. And just come on down for the best food in town at Big Boar Barbecue. Big Boar Barbecue. That's a mouthful. In a hurry, it's easy to stop. White tail crossing and smoke shop. You're gonna like the things we've got. White tail crossing and smoke shop. It's easy to see when you're on the go. There's only one name you need to know. Baraboo, Black River Falls, Nakusa, Toma, Wittenberg. White tail crossing and smoke shop. Here we go, back to the Whitetail Crossing Convenience Store Race Report with Doc and Dan. Welcome back, race fans. It's the Google 1460 WBOG Whitetail Crossing Convenience Store's Race Report. Uh, of course, that's uh, Google1460.com. 1460 on your little red box, black box, silver box, called a radio. And the WBOG TuneIn app. They know I love the TuneIn app. Tell you what, Diker, great experience you had Tuesday there at uh, Kakana. Seeing all the sights, seeing your first Dixieland 500. I got to know. 500? We wouldn't have gotten in bed till 3 I am. My apologies, Dixieland 250. <laughs> Everybody wants to know, is Kyle Busch, you know, how is he behind the scenes? I mean, how relaxed was he, or was he kind of uptight and ornery like we've seen him before in interviews? Well, I interviewed him in Milwaukee about five years ago, and I thought he was a total idiot. He was just flat rude the entire time he was there. I thought it would be worse Tuesday because his airplane all of a sudden broke down on the tarmac. They couldn't get him a helicopter. He had to rent a Toyota, actually drove it almost over our feet getting into the pits, so you figured he was down not going to be in a good mood. He was great. He was media friendly, fan friendly, kid friendly. Matter of fact, I had a chance to talk to Kyle as he put his armor on me and said, let's walk and talk. Ready? Uh, yep. Coming Kyle. out here and racing in the middle of the week, uh, what does it do for you as a guy to racing at the highest level to get out here and run a track that maybe you're not familiar with? Uh, what does it do for you? It's just fun. You know, I enjoy uh, local short track racing. I enjoy the super late model ranks. And uh, these are my favorite type of cars that I've ever raced in. And, and, you know, when I was 16 years old, didn't necessarily stay in them for a, a long time. So uh, it just kind of gives me an opportunity to get back and having some fun and enjoying uh, what it's like here in Wisconsin here today. It's been a while since you've been back. How do you how do you, how do you pick and choose these races and, and try to come back to Kukana? Um, you know, it's just uh, the way the schedule kind of plays out some years. And, um, you know, obviously I've kind of enjoyed racing at this track the last couple times that I've been here, the ASA National Tour, and then also running in the ARCA Midwest Tour as well. So um, really the, the ARCA Midwest Tour puts on some stiff race, some stiff competition with some great racing. And uh, I enjoy that aspect of it as well. So I'm looking forward to, to tonight and uh, seeing what 250 laps here is, is going to be all about. Besides some of Wisconsin's best, is this your first chance to race against Ty Majeski? Um, I think so. No, we've raced against each other one other time, maybe at Cordill, uh, Georgia. He came down for the beginning of the year race, and unfortunately I, uh, I didn't have the best of days that day and, and got crashed out early, so uh, we weren't able to battle it out for the win, that, let's say. But overall, um, you know, we've, we've this will be one of the, the soonest times that we've raced. Cal, is, is, as I was talking to Mark Martin a little while ago, we were talking about short track racing, and these guys come back to Wisconsin and see these huge crowds. What do you think when you come back to the Midwestern race? Uh, I think it's great. You know, I think that uh, the, the fans out here obviously give uh, good support to their short tracks. We've done it in Michigan a few times. I've done it in Georgia. I've done it in Wisconsin. You know, we've been all over the place, but um, certainly here it always tends to lend itself to a good crowd. When you look at the following you have here, obviously Kyle Busch fans over the place, Mark Martin fans, Tom Majeski fans, in the back of your mind, that's got to make you still feel good. I mean, everything you've accomplished, you come back to a track like this and they want to see you. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it means a lot. You know, obviously you have fans all over the country, but uh, to be able to come out and support the local short tracks, have them support the local short tracks as well, even though they're a fan of yours, they're, they're obviously coming out here, they're going to see the Kyle Busch or the Mark Martin of the future and, uh, and hopefully being able to pick up somebody here that they like and that they want to cheer for and that's going to make a name for themselves as years go by. Qualified first and we've got the rain. Do you, do you expect the, check, the track to change at all? Uh, I think it'll change for a little bit, but once the rubber gets back down on the racetrack again, I think it'll go back to its back to its normal place. But we, we're not locals, so we don't know what this place does at night. We just got to give it our best guess and uh, hopefully have a good race. 
So again, and there's a picture I'm waiting for because Kyle had to stop the interview because they did the national anthem. And Kim Kemperman took a picture of me standing next to Kyle Bush and Mark Martin for the national anthem. I'm still waiting to get that one. Kyle Bush was so cool. He was so open to the media. We didn't even talk NASCAR. He wanted to talk about the Midwest. Racing in the Midwest to him and both Mark Martin is huge. I have already heard your Mark Martin interview and uh, both of them come across the same way they they can't believe the the fans that come out to support racing in wisconsin you know bush apparently loves coming back here mark martin always loved being here and uh the support that they, they see in the stands bubba pollard brought it up in his interview earlier this year yep they can't believe the number of fans that come out to a wisconsin racetrack to watch short track racing and uh you know i can't wait to listen to your mark martin interview again later in the show uh these guys uh they're going to send people up here i hope and uh this this is just going to get better and i tell you what kyle bush and this was a direct quote he looked me right in the face when he said this to me. He said, uh, Diker, you announced the lacrosse speedway. He knew this before he got to Kakana, which I thought was kind of cool. So I don't know how he knows where to stalking where. Him. You're not stalking him, are you? I don't even have him on Twitter. He said, I want you to send a message back to lacrosse. He said, I want you to tell every single driver at lacrosse that they are appreciated. They are saving stock car racing and they are saving it here in the Midwest. And he says, if you think that's a lie, go to any short track in the state of Wisconsin and you're going to see fans are there, the drivers are there, new divisions are opening up. And he's looked me right in the face and said, I want you to tell every single driver, you're doing a good job. Keep it alive. Yeah. I thought I got I got goosebumps right now saying that again. That's that's pretty cool. And I don't think not just Wisconsin, but I think you got to include our friends up at Elko and our friends down in Rockford. Oh, yeah. Keeping short track live or racing here in the Midwest. The uh, Hall of Famer, Mr. Mark Martin, is going to be joining us next year in the program. What a fantastic roundabout interview we uh, had with him. You don't want to miss them. That's next in the Google 1460 Race Report. Come on in. Welcome to JT's Long Shots in West Salem. We're Trisha and Jim. It's your new sports bar for watching all your favorite sports. Happy hour Monday through Friday, 3 to 7, with $1.75 domestics and rails. For lunch or dinner, the kitchen is open. half price burgers on Mondays. Tuesday, it's bone or boneless wings. Fish tacos on Friday. Stop after the races tonight to hear live music. It's Joe Cody from 8 to midnight. Jim and I'd love to see you at JT's Long Shots Sports Bar, downtown West Salem. For the best family entertainment value in the Dells area, look no further than Dells Raceway Park. Kids 9 and under are always free. Exciting stock car racing every Saturday night where the stars of tomorrow are racing today in Lake Models, Modified, Sportsman, Bandits, and more. Check the schedule online at DellsRacewayPark.com. Take a free tour of the pits and a lap around the track on race night in DRP's trolley car. Gates open at 4, qualifying at 5.30, green flag racing at 7. Don't miss the excitement every Saturday night at Dells Raceway Park where the best in the Midwest race. Spring, spring, spring. Now that it's spring, no one wants to sit inside and watch TV with it so beautiful outside. And when you get direct TV through Dean's Satellite and Security, you don't have to. You can now take your TV with you into the great outdoors with the free mobile app from Direct TV. Going on a picnic, take your TV with you. Sitting by the lake, don't miss your favorite show. It's really that simple. Call your local friends at Dean's Satellite and Security today at 608-269-2897. Or visit them online at deanstv.com. Now get outside and watch your TV. Content channels and functionality varies by TV package, viewing location, and device. Data charges may apply. Conditions apply. Call for details. Weir's Machine and Racing Products, Bangor, Wisconsin. A proud supporter of the local racing, celebrating 20 years in the racing industry. From dirt tracks to asphalt, Weir's Machine manufactures over 400 quality parts that racers rely on to win races, producing some of the finest parts in the industry. From engine parts, tools, suspension parts, to race accessories. Head to Weir'sMachine.com to browse their entire line or call them direct. Weir's Machine and Racing Products, Bangor, Wisconsin. Here we go, back to the White Tail Crossing Convenience Store Race Report with Doc and Dan. Hi again, folks. Radio Man Dan, Doc, and Billy Doc Niles. You are right smack dab in the middle of the Cougold 1460 White Tail Crossing Convenience Store's Race Report. And uh, we are really recapping my experiences up at the Dixonland 250 uh, up in Kakana. A man that uh, I never thought on my bucket list I would ever have a chance to meet because he's not a, a Midwest guy. He's not a Matt Kenseth. He doesn't stay in the Midwest. Was Mark Martin. You know, I was lucky enough when I was younger to actually meet him when he raced at lacrosse. Got his autograph. You know, I was fanboy back then. 
too. I thought he was really cool and uh, cool to all the fans, all the kids and everything back then, just like he is now. So Mark Martin did a, a roundabout interview with all of us. One of the interesting things here, you're going to want to listen for fans, and I'm going to have Billy talk about this afterwards, a driver creed. We're going to find out what that is. And he knew right off the top of his head the very first year he ran on the cross speedway. Here's Mr. Mark Martin. So I guess, Mark, I guess the first thing is, what does it feel like to be back at Wisconsin National Raceway? I was so excited to, to see the racetrack because, uh, you know, the shape of this racetrack is so unique. And it was one of, it was probably my second favorite short track of all. And uh, it was so cool when we pulled in here and I saw the cars going around it. Uh, man, I love racing here, WIR. 1981 and 1984 winner of this great race. Yeah, and we, you know, we had some other great runs too uh, here, great races, uh, won some races, always ran really good here. Uh, it's a very unique racetrack, and the fans in Wisconsin, uh, you know, support short track racing like no other place in the world. Going from 1981 to today, talk about some of the biggest changes you see when you come back here. I haven't had a chance to look yet. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, we, it's it's still full of great race fans, that's for sure. The Wisconsin race fans, are they support the, the short track racing like no other place I've ever been. And uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm. And, uh, you know, I did get a glimpse of the racetrack uh, coming in here. And uh, I look forward to getting down and seeing the cars up close because that's what's really changed is uh, the race cars. When you talk about some of the drivers that are here now and their driving styles, how does that compare to some of the drivers you raced against back in 81 and 84? Well, things have changed a lot since then. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the way you race, the level of competition. Um, I raced with uh, Trickle and and uh, Tom Refner and Larry Dejans and Mike Miller and so many of the Wisconsin greats. And we had a code of, of driving ethics that we lived by. And those, uh, those ethics have changed over the years, uh, mainly based on the way the cars are and how many uh, good cars there are out there on the racetrack. And, uh, you know, things are just a lot different now. The cars are different, uh, but the racing's still great. One of the guys racing uh, tonight, Ty Majeski, is a local favorite, kind of came up the same way you did. Uh, what do you like about him? I know that I've heard you're a pretty big fan of his. I judge Ty basically on the same with the same criteria I did Matt Kenseth. I knew that uh, uh, Matt won a lot of races up here, and I knew he won uh, different places and different cars and different teams, and I, that told me that Matt knew his race cars, and uh, so I became I knew that Matt would be successful based on knowing what it takes to win races up here. I judge Ty the same way. He's doing the same thing. Um, not many people really stand out like that. Uh, this is a tough area and tough group to stand on, uh, stand out, and uh, it's, it appears that Ty is doing that. So uh, I've got my eye on him. Have you had a chance to talk to Ty, and if so, what are some of the conversations? I haven't met him yet. Really? I haven't met him. That'll happen tonight. Yeah, that'll happen tonight. <laughs> right. But you've talked to, he said he has talked to you on the phone something and he's really appreciated your advice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, did a radio show with him and and, uh, and all. And, uh, you know, uh, when somebody's not winning races and they want my advice, I got plenty for them. When somebody's winning races every week, I ain't got much for them. They're already doing it all right. I'm good. All right. When you were talking about Wisconsin, but such a big fan base, I interviewed Bubba Pollard a couple weeks ago. It came up, ran Madison, and he said when he came out of turn four, he could not believe how jammed the grandstands were. He's also raced several other times in Wisconsin, and he says short track racing is so alive in this state. Can you comment on that? I, I already said that. I mean, Wisconsin supports short track racing like no other place in the world. In no place in the, in the world can you race five five nights a week. I mean, in the summertime, if you're a young race car driver and you want to get some experience, you come to Wisconsin. That's where you can get experience and you can race good, hard, clean, and learn how it's done. That's what I did in 1977, 78. I started coming up here in the summer so that I could race week, uh, day in and day out against the best in short track racing. And I'm sure it's the same way today. I announced at the Lacrosse Speedway. Can you talk about what what you remember about Lacrosse Speedway? 
I remember going to lacrosse for the first time in 1977, and I remember being parked in the, in the grass unlevel, and I remember coil springs rolling out across the ground because we were changing springs on the car. It's my first memory. We had to soften up the springs because it was flatter than where we were used to running, but uh, we had a lot of good racing. I, look, there's no place that I raced in Wisconsin that I didn't love. Again, Hall of Famer Mark Martin, what a pleasure it was to take pictures with him, interview him. He gave me the quote of the weekend, and I had nine media outlets also tell me this, Diker, that was a great way for you to set up what he just responded to you. The driver code and everybody's ears, even the people that were in line for his interview, everybody was quiet. They wanted to hear what he had to say about that. The driver code, do you agree? Oh, I, you know, I got to say the way I've seen a lot of racing the last couple of years, I'm not going to disagree with anything he said. Years ago, there used to be a lot of give and take, and it appears to me the last last four or five years, there's just more take than there is give. There's not, you know, races, feature races, granted, they're only they're 25 lap sprints, but you got a lot of time, you know, especially at lacrosse, that's a big track. You got a lot of time to make that up, to prevent an accident, give somebody the spot, you can always get it back. Don't see a lot of that happening anymore. Again, uh, Mark Martin, and he started talking about how how excited he was to see that track, see the fans, see the short track racing. That guy loves the Midwest. We talked about this in the last segment with Kyle Busch, how much they they are just amazed at the fan support for short track racing in Wisconsin and the Midwest. We'll include yep. our friends on either side there. They uh, they love coming here. Mark Martin echoed the same thing Bobby Allison used to say. If you want to learn how to race, come to Wisconsin. You'll learn how to race a car here. And some drivers sure did that uh, at Kakana. Austin Nason, I was just so thrilled and watched the number 14. He was in the top four for all 250 laps along with Kyle Busch, Casey Johnson, Tom Majeski working his way up. Chris Weinkoff had a stellar race car for quite a while as well. And, um, well, Mark Martin hit it right in the head. Uh, so I want to thank uh, Kyle Busch and Mark Martin for joining us in the program. Next up, the top interviews continue. This one was somewhat of a surprise. We're going to explain to you why there was an Xfinity driver at Kakana next on the White to cross the committee source race report. Spring, spring, spring. Now that it's spring, no one wants to sit inside and watch TV with it so beautiful outside. And when you get direct TV through Dean Satellite and Security, you don't have to. You can now take your TV with you into the great outdoors with the free mobile app from Direct TV. Going on a picnic, take your TV with you. Sitting by the lake, don't miss your favorite show. It's really that simple. Call your local friends at Dean Satellite and Security today at 608-269-2897. Or visit them online at deanstv.com. Now get outside and watch your TV. Content, channels, and functionality varies by TV package, viewing location, and device. Data charges may apply. Conditions apply. Call for details. Come on in. Welcome to JT's Long Shots in West Salem. We're Trisha and Jim. It's your new sports bar for watching all your favorite sports. Happy hour Monday through Friday, 3 to 7, with $1.75 domestics and rails. For lunch or dinner, the kitchen is open. half price burgers on Mondays. Tuesday, it's bone or boneless wings. Fish tacos on Friday. Stop after the races tonight to hear live music. It's Joe Cody from 8 to midnight. Jim and I'd love to see you at JT's Long Shots Sports Bar, downtown West Salem. Stop. White tail crossing and smoke shop. You're gonna like the things we've got. White tail crossing and smoke shop. It's easy to see when you're on the go. There's only one name you need to know. Baraboo, Black River Falls, Nakusa, Toma, Wittenberg. White tail crossing and smoke shop. Weir's Machine and Racing Products, Bangor, Wisconsin. A proud supporter of the local racing, celebrating 20 years in the racing industry. From dirt tracks to asphalt, Weir's Machine manufactures over 400 quality parts that racers rely on to win races, producing some of the finest parts in the industry. From engine parts, tools, suspension parts, to race accessories. Head to Weir'sMachine.com to browse their entire line or call them direct. Weir's Machine and Racing Products, Bangor, Wisconsin. It's Team Dean time as the Whitetail Crossing Convenience Store Race Report continues on Cool Gold 1460. Hi again, folks. That's Billy Doc Niles from Radio Man Dan. You are right smack dab in the middle of the Whitetail Crossing Community Store's Race Report here on 1460 WBOG. Still to come, uh, Paul Reichert's Burning Rubber Race Report. Also the top three interviews from the Lacrosse Speedway Late Models from last Saturday night. Uh, you know, when I was at Kakana, we were trying to figure out who it was that shook down Kyle Busch's car on Monday. The ARCA Midwest Tour rule is if you are in a tour race, 
race, you as the driver cannot shake your car down 24 hours prior to the race. Kyle Busch was begging Greg McCars to let him do it at Madison. Couldn't do it. Didn't matter what track it was. We didn't figure it out until we got to the track. It was Kyle Benjamin. That's right. It was a guy named Kyle Benjamin. Took second in the Xfinity race uh, at Iowa a couple of weeks ago. And he was there. And we were talking about how long the, the uh, close the timeline was for Kyle Busch not to be able to qualify. They were already getting him set to run that race. Well, you got to figure Benjamin was down in Iowa over the weekend. Just a short jaunt up to up to Kakana to, to get up there. And yeah, it was since he's not since he was not scheduled to race the car, he could shake it down. And uh, you know, I understand talking to you, they were even getting it set up for him to even qualify because of the problems that Bush had coming in. They had a seat insert that was already placed in for him to be able to fit the seat. And then he was also in his racing suit as Kyle drove by in his Toyota, of course. And uh, actually, Kyle came out, woke up from a nap, and very graciously said, Dan, let's hit record. All right, Lightsail Crossing, Cuban News Source Race Report, 1460 WBOG. Uh, running into a, uh, a familiar name here at uh, Kakana, Kyle Benjamin stopping by. Kyle, how are you, sir? Good, how are you? Doing good. What brings you to Kakana? Are you racing, or I saw you were doing some testing this week? Uh, I just did some testing for Kyle, trying to get the car right. I think we did yesterday. The car's got a lot of long run speed, so it should be good tonight. Now, you were saying that WIR is a track you've not ran before. When someone asks you, like Kyle Bush, hey, I need you to shake my car down the track you've never ran, what are your first thoughts? Uh, trying to find it on YouTube and asking people about it, no, especially this place, you know, so different. You got to watch a video to kind of figure the line out a little bit. So I had to find some good videos. What'd you think? Unlike anything I've seen before, um, Fresh Road was kind of cool. It looks like they messed it up and just decided to go with it, which I like. It just gives the track a lot of character. I like the way you run that, but it's not like anything you have down south, which is cool. If you had to compare this track to a track you've ran, what would it be? Nothing. It's not like <laughs> anything else. And that's the cool thing about it. So does it want to make you want to get your feet wet and run here at Kakana one of these days? Yeah, it definitely does. I love this place. Now, you were saying we were talking about uh, uh, lacrosse speedway, and of course, Oktoberfest, uh, 48th year coming around this year. You don't really run a lot up north here, but we've seen a lot of drivers to take Bubba Pollard, who's been up here three or four times in Wisconsin this year. Is this something you maybe want to kind of do down the road, is see some of some these northern tracks? Yeah, I would like to. Like, I've been to Columbus and you know places like that, um, and Madison, Wisconsin, but I haven't been to you know, Kankana and Sling and all those places, and I'd like to go see those. When you obviously have been to Wisconsin, you've seen full grandstands. Down south, Bubba Pollard and I talked a couple weeks ago that you kind of don't see that much, and you see how much short track racing means to an area like this. What have you saw when you've come into a, a race like, like Columbus, and all of a sudden everything's full? Yeah, it's always full. Um, I heard the here it's going to be full too tonight, and especially with Kyle here, I'm sure that'll help pack it out also. But yeah, that seems like everybody that talks to you says the Midwest Tour usually packs it out every single time. Xfinity race here. Uh, pretty successful your last time out. Yeah, um, really successful. It was a good run for us. And the biggest thing to take away is I got to learn a lot in that race and run with a bunch of good people. Um, Xfinity for the rest of this year, full season? Uh, just Kentucky this year. What else are on? What else is in your uh, your, your, your rear view mirror? Well, we got some races coming up, like uh, some Marcus stuff, I think, possibly. I like to do. Is Xfinity something that could be worked into? I mean, you know, if you look at time of Jesse, all of a sudden last year, nothing. This year, at least three. Is, it, is the Kyle Benjamin name putting in the, in the mix? I, I certainly hope so. I feel like, you know, we've ran so good this year that, you know, maybe that's an option for next year. I'm hoping. I don't know for sure, but I just want to have a ride somewhere. And, and if, if people see, hey, you know, a name needs to come up. Well, hey, this guy's shaking out Kyle Busch's car at a racetrack in Wisconsin. That, that's got to lend some credibility for you. Oh, uh, yeah, it definitely doesn't hurt to, you know, get around. Most of it's seat time. I just want to stay in the car as much as possible and make laps. And, uh... You know, spend some quality time with Kyle Busch doesn't hurt either. So for our listeners in this area that are familiar with you, that aren't familiar with the tracks you normally run, tell us about where you usually run and what you run. Usually, like, late model-wise, we'd be down south with the uh, Pensacola Mobile stuff, mostly, like the Blizzard Series. Uh, and then I did a lot of Canaan and Narca um, for two years and then into Xfinity. And obviously, seat time's going to be big, and when you're looking at more Canaan and, and Arca, uh, Derek Kraus, good friend of the radio show, too, talks about Canaan all the time. Yeah, it's really a series to learn how to drive a heavy car. They're pretty close to Xfinity. Future aspirations? Uh, hopefully to get a cup. I think that's everybody's at this level, but I, I feel like, you know, if I can keep running well and just, you know, stay out of trouble, it'd be a good possibility. 
Again, Kyle Benjamin, I want to thank him graciously for uh, just popping up out of nowhere. Uh, Paul Reichert, I thought it was cool as he was watching what I was doing uh, at Kakona with the pictures and whatnot. He said, man, Danny, he goes, you're really going to top last week's show. And we had Rich Bickle and Jody Derry on, and he knew we were going to have Mark Martin and Kyle Bush. And I said, yeah, and how about Kyle Benjamin? This is this has been one of our more stellar shows. I mean, the top-notch uh, competition, you know, comes to Wisconsin. And, you know, you, you get Kyle Benjamin just shaking the car down, and he gets it right for Kyle Bush. Bush goes out, sets fast time without even taking any practice laps. That's amazing. And then to run in the top four of the whole race, uh, Benjamin, part of the Joe Gibbs family. So it was, like I said earlier, it was easy for him to run up from Iowa and do some practice laps for that car and get it all set up for Bush. He runs the number 18 and 20 for Joe Gibbs Racing. He's on a four Xfinity deal this year. Uh, he took second in Iowa a couple of weeks ago. His final race this year will be Kentucky on September 23rd. Does he continue Xfinity next year real quickly? I would imagine so, but you know, it's, we're in the middle of silly season every everybody's predicting stuff you know uh, we saw menard jump teams last week leaving that 27 car open don't be shocked if you see another dylan there when billy and i close the program out kyle bush responds to the new xfinity rules that were laid down this week and i'm going to be bleeping out some of the things he said <laughs> that's coming up more of the program next right here white tail crossing community store on 1460 wbog You don't have to fly to Kansas City to get great barbecue. Jerry Beyer here, and I'm pleased to announce that we have opened a new location. Now you'll find our big board cook shack parked on the corner of George and July Street every Wednesday through Sunday. So come on over and sink your teeth into the barbecue voted best in La Crosse County. Don't forget takeout. And just come on down for the best food in town at Big Boar Barbecue. Big Boar Barbecue. That's a mouthful. For the best family entertainment value in the Dells area, look no further than Dells Raceway Park. Kids 9 and under are always free. Exciting stock car racing every Saturday night where the stars of tomorrow are racing today in late models, modified sportsmen, bandits, and more. Check the schedule online at dellsracewaypark.com. Take a free tour of the pits and a lap around the track on race night in DRP's trolley car. Gates open at 4, qualifying at 5.30, green flag racing at 7. Don't miss the excitement every Saturday night at Dells Raceway Park where the best in the Midwest race. Come on in. Welcome to JT's Long Shots in West Salem. We're Trisha and Jim. It's your new sports bar for watching all your favorite sports. Happy hour Monday through Friday, 3 to 7, with $1.75 domestics and rails. For lunch or dinner, the kitchen is open. half price burgers on Mondays. Tuesday, it's bone or boneless wings. Fish tacos on Friday. Stop after the races tonight to hear live music. It's Joe Cody from 8 to midnight. Jim and I'd love to see you at JT's Long Shots Sports Bar, downtown West Salem. Stop. White tail crossing and smoke shop. You're gonna like the things we've got. White tail crossing and smoke shop. It's easy to see when you're on the go. There's only one name you need to know. Baraboo, Black River Falls, Nakusa, Toma, Wittenberg. White tail crossing and smoke shop. Get ready, it's the Days In Burnin' Rubber Race Report with Paul Reichert. Brought to you by the Days In Hotel and Conference Center on French Island Lacrosse. Now here's Paul with this week's report. Hi again, race fans, it's Paul Reichert. Got another edition of the Burnin' Rubber Race Report and ready to go for you after the break. Along with the we'll talk about this week with the World of All All Late Model Drive, Fairbury, Illinois for the 20th Annual Prairie Dirt Classic. The NASCAR Canyon Pro East and West Series got together for their annual combined race at the Iowa Speedway. And the Larry Teachers Memorial took place up at the Wausau this past weekend. Big 8 Lay Miles headline Friday, Super Lay Miles headline Saturday. All that next year, right the next year, the that big meeting or wedding reception. If you're hungry, food and drink are just steps away at the Heroes Bar and Grill inside the hotel. So if you're planning a pool party, wedding reception, or just want a night away in a jacuzzi suite, Days Inn Hotel and Conference Center on French Island is your stop under the sun. 
Hi again, race fans. It's Paul Riker back with you for another edition of the Burning Rubber Race Report presented by the Days Inn Hotel and Conference Center. Time to check out the racing action from this past week. We'll start with last Monday, the All-Star Circuit of Champions at Pittsburgh's Pennsylvania Motor Speedway in Imperial, Pennsylvania. And Tony Stewart, yes, Smoke, scored the victory. Tuesday, the Super Dirt Car Series at Aldrome Granby in Quebec, Canada. Matt Shepard, the winner. And the World of Allah Sprint Cars, also north of the border at Ox Weekend, Ontario, Canada. Logan Chuchart scored the victory. On Wednesday, the Super Dirt Car Series moved on to Aldrome Drummond in Drummondville, Ontario, Canada. Matt Shepard, the winner. And the World of Allah Light Models were at Fayette County Speedway in Brownstown, Illinois. Brandon Shepard scored the victory. Thursday, at Kakana, the Bruce Mueller Memorial taking place. Lowell Bennett won the Super Late Model feature. Mike Meyerhofer, the Late Model feature. Friday, at Grundy, double features for all divisions thanks to the rain out from the previous week. Makeup feature went to Jim Weber, not Minnesota Jim Weber, this is Chicagoland Jim Weber. And Eddie Hoffman won the schedule feature. Ryan Gibson won the late model feature at Hawkeye Downs. Adam Hansel won the USRA modified feature at Mississippi Thunder. BMOTs have their annual Bayman BMOT Challenge race won by Parker Hale. Dalton Zero won the super late model feature at the Norway Speedway up in Diupia. Ashley Anderson won the Wasola modified feature at Red Cedar. Denny Schott won the modified feature at Thomas Sparta Raceway. Great Northern Sportsman Series returned to make up their rain out from June. And guess who won? Yep, Dave Trout. All-Star Circuit of Champions at Outlaw Speedway in Dundee, New York. Ryan Smith the winner. Arca ran at Pocono Friday. Justin Haley scored the victory. And Madison, the Bandit Big Rig Series headlined the Big Rigs and Big Wings Special. Tommy Boilu the winner. Must see Racing Extreme Sprint Car Series also on hand. Brian Gerster the winner. And the Midwest Trucks also in action. Chester Ace made his first appearance of the season and won. The Big 8 Late Models were at Wausau for night one of Larry Deegan's Memorial. Michael Bilderback won for the second year in a row. IRA Sprints at the Lang Lake County Speedway up in Antigo up in northern Wisconsin. Scotty Theo took the victory. NASCAR k Pro East and West Series got together at Iowa for their combined race. Todd Gilland won the race. Derek Cross, by the way, won the pole. The Southern Super Series at Five Flags Speedway in Pensacola. I think that Slayer Nationals win revitalized Bubba Pollard. He won again. Bobby Santos won the UCX Silver Crown race at Toledo, Ohio. With still a Challenge Series late models at Anzola Speedway in Superior. Rick Hennestad and John Canta split the twin features. And the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars at Hartford, Michigan. David Gravel scored the win. Saturday at Cedar Lake. USRA late models headlining that show. Lance Hofer the winner. Dustin Sorensen won the USRA modified feature at Deer Creek. Nick Nolan won the late model feature at the Dells. It was the Michael Show at Elko. Double features for the NASCAR late models split between Michael Beamish and Michael Ostyke. Jacob Nonestad won the late model feature at Jefferson. Terry McCarl won the U Lucas Oil American Sprint Car Series feature at Knoxville. He also won the 410 Sprint feature, the weekly feature. Steve Carlson won the NASCAR late model feature at Lacrosse, holding off Nick Panitsky. At Rice Lake, the Wasilla Challenge Series late models ran. AJ Demo won. Mike Anderson took the Wasilla modified feature. Night two of the Eli Regions Memorial State Park Speedway in Wausau saw Chris Wimmer win the big feature. First race I think he's had in three, four years. He's been a crew chief mainly. All-Star Circuit of Champions at Orange County Fair Speedway in Middletown, New York. Slam and Slammy Swindell, the victor. Luke saw Amy Pro Motocross at Washougal, Washington. Martin Muscane swept the 450 miles for the second straight week. International Super Modified Association in Sandusky, Ohio for the High Miler Nationals. Mike Ordway Jr. the winner. Must see Racing Extreme Strength Cars moved on to Rockford Saturday night. Brian Gerster the winner. Northwest Super Late Mile Series at Spokane Super Oval in Airway Heights, Washington. Owen Riddle the winner. Matt Craig won the past South Tour race at Southern National Motorsports Park in Kenley, North Carolina. Pacific Challenge Series at Ukiah, California won by Randy Hedrick. Brady Bacon won the USAC Sprint feature at Lakeside Speedway in Kansas City. World of all the late models were at Fairbury, Illinois for the 20th running of the Prairie Dirt Classic. Brandon Shepard scored the victory. David Gravel won a second straight World of Outlaw Sprint Car feature. They were at Walmart Saturday night. And Cole Anderson, yes, Minnesota's Cole Anderson, went to New Smyrna and won the Pro Late Model feature down in Florida. And on Sunday at Angel Park Speedway, IRA Sprint regular Billy Baylaw got behind the wheel of a Badger Midget and won the feature. Slinger saw the Super Late Models return to action. Alex Prunty won that feature. And we had a first time winner in the late models, Jacob Hassler. All-Star Circuit of Champions were at Lebanon Valley Speedway in West Lebanon, New York. Danny Dietrich, the winner. Arca CRA Super Series at Kilcare Speedway in Xenia, Ohio. Second straight win for Travis Braden. The pass north toward Oxford, Maine. Travis Benjamin won a second in a row. And the USAC Sprints were at Randolph County Speedway in Mobile, Missouri. Tyler Courtney scored the victory. And that'll do it for this edition of the Burning Rubber Race Report, presented by the Days in the Hotel and Conference Center. I'm Paul Riker, and we'll talk to you folks next week. That's the Days Inn Burning Rubber Race Report with Paul Riker, brought to you by the Days Inn Hotel and Conference Center on French Island Lacrosse.
Are you looking for comfort under the sun? You can find that and a whole lot more with your stay at the Days Inn Hotel and Conference Center on French Island La Crosse. The Days Inn has 148 spacious rooms, an indoor pool, hot tub, fitness room, and plenty of banquet space to host that big meeting or wedding reception. If you're hungry, food and drink are just steps away at the Heroes Bar and Grill inside the hotel. So if you're planning a pool party, wedding reception, or just want a night away in a jacuzzi suite, Days Inn Hotel and Conference Center on French Island is your stop under the sun. Weir's Machine and Racing Products, Bangor, Wisconsin. A proud supporter of the local racing, celebrating 20 years in the racing industry. From dirt tracks to asphalt, Weir's Machine manufactures over 400 quality parts that racers rely on to win races, producing some of the finest parts in the industry. From engine parts, tools, suspension parts, to race accessories. Head to Weir'sMachine.com to browse their entire line or call them direct. Weir's Machine and Racing Products, Bangor, Wisconsin. Spring, spring, spring. Now that it's spring, no one wants to sit inside and watch TV with it so beautiful outside. And when you get direct TV through Dean's Satellite and Security, you don't have to. You can now take your TV with you into the great outdoors with the free mobile app from Direct TV. Going on a picnic, take your TV with you. Sitting by the lake, don't miss your favorite show. It's really that simple. Call your local friends at Dean Satellite and Security today at 608-269-2897. Or visit them online at deanstv.com. Now get outside and watch your TV. Content, channels, and functionality varies by TV package, viewing location, and device. Data charges may apply. Conditions apply. Call for details. You don't have to fly to Kansas City to get great barbecue. Jerry Beyer here, and I'm pleased to announce that we have opened a new location. Now you'll find our Big Boar Cook Shack parked on the corner of George and Joy Street every Wednesday through Sunday. So come on over and sink your teeth into the barbecue voted best in La Crosse County. Don't forget takeout. And just come on down for the best food in town at Big Boar Barbecue. Big Boar Barbecue. That's a mouthful. There's the white flag. One more lap on Whitetail Crossing Convenience Store Race Report on Cool Gold 1460. Yeah, Dr. Bill, Dr. Niles, welcome back one more time here on 1460 WBOG. It is the race report brought to you by Whitetail Crossing. So all of this Dixieland 250 stuff, we had to get it in. Got to take care of our homeboys at Lacrosse Speedway, though. Yep, uh, last week, great, you know, great race like we talked about on the TV show. Top three, no shock here, Steve Carlson. Uh, Nick Paninski and, and uh, Brad Powell. What a great race they put on. You know, uh, I think you got you got Paul Reichert's audio here. Let's listen to what you guys had to say to the top three from last Saturday night. Third place podium finish tonight, powered by Tomcat Racing Engines and the Chevy Double S. How about it for BP Brad Powell? <laughs> Congratulations, Brad. Well, I'll tell you what, you guys were long jam back there for quite a while before you started parting the seas. Yeah, it was. It took a while. <laughs> Talk about the performance of your 23 tonight. Uh, got really free all the way around, so I had my hands full. These guys, these guys were fast, so I let them go, and it is what it is. Tomorrow, live to fight another day. That is right. One piece back on the hauler. Top three for Brad Powell. Second place worked his way through quite a bit of traffic as well. How about it for Nick Paninski? Well, I'll tell you, it's been a while since you and Steve have been stuck that far back and uh, it took that many laps to work your way free. Yeah, you know, he did a uh, really good job getting to the front tonight. Uh, I did everything I could to stay with him. It was just, uh, just a race to the front and he did a better job. Top five cars were awfully strong before you and Steve and Brad finally had that one, two, three coming around about four to go. Yeah, there's really a group of 10, uh, 10 of us that are really fast and pretty equal for the first uh, 10, 15 laps. But uh, like I said, Steve, uh, just really good long run car, and I got a really good long run car, and uh, he just got to the front first. All right, how about in second place tonight, Nick Panitsky? Another feature race sticker going top of the 66, giving up for Steve Carlson. <laughs> you hopped out of your car, looked a little bit spent that time. Uh, it was a long race for me. Uh, my car was sliding all over, but it, it was a good car. I mean, good enough to win. Well, Nick, he's really giving me some competition, so I, I have to get every win I can get now. You had about four laps to go. Your seven, your seven leg lead got down to about two, and I watched you mash that accelerator coming out of two. Well, yeah, there's some of the lap cars really held me up there, and uh, he, he caught up to me. Uh. Now the feature race win, your point leader, Steve Carlson. Should be awfully uh, interesting to see what happens tonight. 
between those three and all of our other classes at the Lacrosse Fairground Speedway. Temperatures a little bit more on the cool side, and we're going to throw a couple of twists into the racing program this evening. Bill Dog Niles? Yeah, we got the late models of Sportsman and Thunderstarks joining them tonight as the minivans, and get there early tonight, folks. Get your seat early. It's the trailer race of destruction. Oh, that is going to be so much fun. Can't wait to get out there and watch it tonight. And again, Billy and I are going to go round two on uh, a lot of kudos from drivers that I heard last week when you skipped out on us again of uh, interview the fast time qualifiers and the heat race winners and the feature race winners. Uh, we're going to try that again here this evening, and then you're going to see Paul Riker and I on the track as we get ready to uh, find out who the top three Trailer Race of Destruction competitors are. Yes. This is still like, I call this a test and tune. We tried it a couple weeks ago. We're going to try and tweak a little bit this week, see how things work out. But all in all, I, I had a lot of fun doing that two weeks ago. Looking forward to it tonight. You know, somebody asked me the other day, you know, I always walk out of the racetrack with my wristband. I cut it off. I throw it in the garbage. Is there anything I should do? Maybe recycle that thing. Maybe make a necklace out of it. I think you've got a better plan for tickets and the pit passes. Race fans, JT's Long Shots has your four-day pass to the Oktoberfest race weekend. Stop in after the races or any time during the week with your ticket stub or your pit pass. Put your name and your and your phone number on the back of it. Drop it in the hopper. This September, one lucky winner will be pulled out of that hopper and get two four-day passes to the Oktoberfest race weekend. That's JT's Long Shots in historic downtown West Salem. Parmesan garlic wings. That's Love them. Oh, my do. God, them are good. Tonight, late model sportsman, Thunderstocks, minivans, trailer race of destruction at the Lacrosse Fairgrounds Speedway. Check out lacrossespeedway.com. Also, you can find the Whitetail Crossing uh, convenience stores race report on Facebook and add yourself because you can find out what's coming up week after week. For Paul Reichert, Billy Doc Niles, Jesse Push, the buttons, I'm Randy Man Dan Diker. We will see you at the lacrosse speed tonight. Support your local short tracks. This is 1460 WBOG. There's the checkered flag. Join us again next week for the Whitetail Crossing Convenience Store Race Report on Cool Gold 1460 brought to you by Whitetail Crossing Convenience Stores in Baraboo, Black River Falls, and Toma. By Big Boar Barbecue, Highway 16 West Salem, and 3rd Street, Downtown La Crosse. By Dean Satellite and Security, your local Direct TV retailer. By the Days Inn Hotel and Conference Center on French Island La Crosse. By Dells Raceway Park in Wisconsin Dells. By Weir's Machine and Racing Products in Bangor, Wisconsin. And by J.T. Long Shots Grill and Saloon in historic downtown West Salem. It's the Whitetail Crossing Convenience Store Race Report on Cool Gold 1460.